I mean, it's the rapidity of change which is astonishing now. Uh, the world is changing, the place of the West uh, in the world is no longer sort of just assuredly dominant and although we don't know what the next 30 years will be, China will be the biggest economy, uh, we know that. Robotics are now beginning to come on the scene in a way that I remember pe people saying in the 70s, but like most things, the short-term effects are overestimated and the long-term effects are underestimated. Um, but that could have profound changes to the relationship of um, how people relate to uh, the economy. Um, worries about underclasses or people left behind as the society moves on. We need to know these things. Politicians need to know. They need to keep in touch. Uh, I'm Andy Russ. Uh, I used to be Deputy Director of the Government Economic Service. And I've now gone back into academia, universities. Well, I, my, my career is unusual, actually. <laughs> I, st I started off as a manual worker, uh, so I kind of walked out of school at 13 and officially left at 15. Uh, but it was very uninspiring. I mean, secondary modern. Uh, it's interesting, social changes. It was, it was more custodial than educational, so nothing really inspired me there. Yeah, but when I was doing um, the apprenticeship for telephones, tele telecoms, the old general post office, uh, to make us... Uh, more civilised or whatever, we, we had to do liberal studies, which was often silly, with, you know, T.S. Eliot or something, which was lost on us. Uh, but he was away one week, and we had a sociologist in. And that was the first time anyone had pointed out that you could use rigorous techniques to study society uh, and try and explain the things that you see every day that are around you. That was enormously relevant, and I'd never looked back from there. There's been an, an emphasis in, in government, um, either on direct sort of financial incentive or on coercion. But most of society, most people don't behave just because of the law. Um, and you know, just looking at incentives is not the whole picture. People have complex behaviour, complex social relationships. They are affected by the society around them. Um, things are uh, much more interconnected. So there's examples whereby, for the, the obvious ones, the tax letters, the way you frame the letters, if you put people's postcodes, if you put the amount of people who paid tax in an area, this has a large effect. It has two effects. It seems to be, one, the deterrent, perhaps they're closing in on me, but also a feeling, well, if everybody else is paying, then I'm also you know, committed uh, and beholden to, to actually pay as well. This is a, a social collective or whatever, you know. Or if you're collecting car tax, the fact that now we can put technologies where you put a photo of one's car seems to personalise it. And these things are not trivial at all. These sound small, but, the, you know, the behavioural insights team showed that these accumulate to billions, literally can be billions of pounds of, of, of money saved by the state uh, and better behaviours inculcated. And these are behavioural changes. They're to do with the way human beings interact. That's what social science studies, the way humans interact.